the matter is so serious, my brothers in Islam, that while I was preparing for this lecture, I had to go through the Sufi websites. Right? Because I need to know, you know, what these people are really about. I can't just be coming, you know, running my mouth without any solid evidences. And when I went to the sites, you know, reading their statements, observing their reputations, it struck me that uh, we are different in almost everything. There's a difference in almost everything. The Sufis have no reservation using the term Sufi. Now you may find some people, for example, who have a particular you know, sect in Islam. If you try to call them by that name, they will be, they will be you know, offended. The Sufis don't have, have no problem with using the name Sufism and calling himself a Sufi. Keeping in mind that there's nothing in the Quran or the Sunnah ever alluding to this title. So the name itself is innovated. What do you think about the rest of the teachings? If the name itself comes from, you know, they differed about where it came from. Some of them say Ahl Sufa. Linguistically, it cannot be. Some of them said from the Sophia, Greek word, which means wisdom. Historically, that cannot be. And they have a number of interpretations. The most sound one that Sufia, our Tasawwuf, our Sufi Yun, our Sufi comes from Suf. Suf is wool. It's the fabric. Wool. Why? Around a hundred years after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, remember innovations. Innovations started to occur at the time of the Sahaba, and you all know the famous hadith of Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu, where one of the tabi'in told him, "I saw something odd in the masjid, but I didn't say anything until you judge." And he waited for Ibn Mas'ud in front of his house. Then Ibn Mas'ud came out. They went to the masjid. They found some people sitting in a circle. Remembering Allah in what fashion? By throwing rocks. He will say, say takbir, and they will count Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar using stones or pebbles. And Ibn Mas'ud said, what are you doing? What are you doing? They said, we're remembering Allah. He said, count your evil deeds. I guarantee you, your good deeds will not be erased. Woe to you of Ummah Muhab of, um, um, of Muhammad sallallahu how soon you will be destroyed. The silk, the clothing of the Prophet ﷺ is still around us. It's still around. And really, either you are better guided than the Messenger of Allah, or you are opening up a door of misguidance. From back then, people started to go to extremes. Among them are those people. They said we will only wear wool. To resemble, to resemble who? Jesus, the son of Mary. To resemble Isa ibn Maryam. This while knowing that the Prophet ﷺ used to wear cotton and all kinds of fabric. And he specifically hated wool. In the hadith of Abu Dawood and Al-Hakim, which is Sahih by Dhahabi and others, uh, Aisha anha said, I made for the Messenger of Allah a shirt of wool. When he put it on and he sweat in it, he, was, he disliked the smell of the sweat, the, the odor that came from the from t-shirt the because of sweat. So he threw it away. In fact, he didn't like it. Because when he sweat, alayhi salatu salam, the odor which it, it uh, uh, you know, produced wasn't very pleasant. So he didn't even like to wear wool. So this is where it began. That we don't like the dunya. We're detached from the dunya. It, beca it began as asceticism, which is fine. Zuhd. We have a word for that in Islam called zuhd. Being careless about the dunya. You don't care about this worldly life. You're looking forward to the life to come. It's a wonderful concept. Islam is based on that to a large extent. But see, it began with that. And as the Prophet ﷺ said, and woe to you from introducing anything into Islam because every newly introduced matter is an innovation. Every innovation will lead astray and that will lead to the fire. Innovations begin small, then they grow and grow until they destroy the person engaged in them. And this is exactly what happened to the Sufis. Now, 